Hey everyone, welcome to Crypto Data. So today we're gonna to go over EOS and why it's been rising so much this past week and how it's gotten to the top five and continually had double digit gains almost every day. So looking from a week ago, it was 1167 and it's gone to a high of over $22. So that's nearly 100% increase in a week. And there's a couple of reasons for that. So I'm explaining exactly what EOS is, how it compares to Ethereum and a couple news articles and dates for why it's been rising. So if you go to the website eos.io and you go to their FAQ page, you can see there's a brief description of what it is. And basically it's, they enable vertical and horizontal scaling of dApps or decentralized applications. So, you know, dApps are used with Ethereum as well. And basically their software provides accounts, authentication, databases, asynchronous communication, and the scheduling of applications across multiple CPU cores and or clusters. It says the resulting technology is a blockchain architecture that has the potential to scale to millions of transactions per second, eliminate user fees, and allow for quick and easy deployment of decentralized applications. So again, that's kind of you know different from Ethereum in the sense that you know they're able to handle so many transactions. And while it's not you know at that level right now, uh, that's what they plan to have it in the future. And then also with the fees, you know they eliminate user fees versus you know, using gas or whatever you'd use, you know, for Ethereum, having those fees. So a couple differences there, and I'll go into more as we continue on to this, but um, but basically, you know, you go to their Twitter website, and basically they have a lot of updates here. Um, not too many recent updates, but I'll go over a couple articles that they've written on Medium and some that are published on Forbes. So if you go to Forbes, um, a couple of background things for EOS, it says... EOS is benefiting from several tailwinds, including an ongoing ICO and widespread faith in Dan Larimer, who currently serves as CTO of Block One and is leading the development of EOS. So for those who don't know, Dan Larimer is actually the co-founder of Steemit. So Steemit is a decentralized application um, and it's run on the blockchain. And basically you can write articles and people can give you upvotes um, and it's basically, you're essentially getting paid out in cryptocurrency, if you will. Then you can, you know, sell that, convert it to actual Steam tokens, sell it on the blockchain, um, you know, on an exchange, and then convert that to actual fiat. So this is a great platform. Um, you know, I've been using it for about eight months. I have my own account, and it's great. I mean, they, I believe if you, uh, there was an article, and Steemit actually allows up to 10,000 transactions per second. So if you go to hear this article here on Steemit, it says cryptocurrency transaction speeds compared to Visa and PayPal. So you see Visa is 24,000 transactions per second, Ripple's 1,500, PayPal's 193, Bitcoin Cash is 60, Litecoin's 56, and then Dash is 48, Ethereum is 20, and Bitcoin is seven. Then you scroll down here and you see Steemit, their transactions per second is 10,000. So they they already have experience in gaining a lot of transactions per second. So that's something to keep in mind when you see you know a person like Dan Larimer who left Steemit and is now working with EOS. Um, when they have those high transactions per second goals, you know like up to a million. I mean that sounds a lot right now, but someone who's already familiar with handling those numbers, I think it's definitely doable. So. In this article it just goes to um, explain that you know the community is very excited and expecting EOS to be the real competitor of Ethereum. So there's a lot of talk about EOS being the Ethereum killer. Um, I think they can coexist, but again, you know they're just kind of different use cases, if you will. So um, and then basically here it just talks about um, although this token is still considered experimental, it seems alternative investors are snapping them up. So again, you know, a lot of people, while EOS is still speculative um, and the platform is relatively new, there is a lot of potential for this platform. So that was one article that came out about it. Another one that was actually, um, you know, it was, it was part of a uh, catalyst, if you will, is one, it said confidence is high in Dan Larimer. And then um, also when it got added to eToro. So Article here says eToro adds EOS to the platform. So eToro is a global trading investment platform 
with over 9 million users. And on April 23rd, five days or six days ago, they announced that they added EOS onto their platform, bringing their total number of cryptocurrency assets available on the site to 10. And it says EOS is the token linked to one of the most powerful infrastructures for decentralized applications. And it de enables development, hosting, and execution of commercial scale decentralized apps on its platform. And then also it says EOS will soon also be added to eToro's crypto copy fund, which uses CFDs to enable investors to diversify across all available cryptocurrencies with just one click. So there's a they have a lot of you know belief in EOS and that they're gonna add it to their crypt uh, their crypto copy fund as well. So again, you have all these exchanges, you know, adding EOS to their platforms and having a lot of confidence in it. And I think that's kind of what, what's fueled this big run. It's just one thing after another. And then um, another difference of EOS versus Ethereum. So EOS is actually proof of stake while Ethereum is proof of work. Now, Ethereum is um, going to switch to hybrid model soon, um, which is going to be called Casper. And it's actually a little uh, proof of stake and proof of work. But basically, for those who don't know what the difference is, so proof of work is basically you're rewarded for your work. So it's focused on miners who use GPUs and ASICs to solve, you know, the um, the algorithms and uh, or the math problems, if you will, to verify uh, on the blockchain. But um, you know, for doing all this work and processing, then they're rewarded with you know coins that are mined in exchange for tokens. So basically, what the difference is proof of stake instead of having a lot of miners using a lot of electricity and, and everything you know to get these coins basically what proof of stake is is you buy buy a master node and in order to have that master node you usually need to have you know a thousand of one coin or you know whatever it's required and you just hold that coin and essentially stake it and then you'll get rewards for staking it so you know the rewards are based on how much you have locked away and how long it's locked away for so it kind of incentivizes people to hold it so one of the um you know advantages is energy is conserved miners won't have to consume loads of electricity to solve cryptographic hash functions which is good for our wallets and good for the planet in addition by locking up ethereum a scarcity is created which should drive up the price so again, you know, it talks about um, you know some advantages for going proof of stake, which Ethereum is going to do um, eventually in the future. So, uh, so yeah, so this is what just one of the differences for them that I wanted to point out. And again, just expanding on what Ethereum is doing, um, it says you know Ethereum's block reward whenever they do switch to that hybrid model, uh, it'll essentially be five months from now. There's an article published on April second, and it says Ethereum's block reward reduced to 0.6 Ether. Vitalik proposes 120 million hard cap. So basically what's going to happen is the miners, you know, instead of getting um, 3 Ether per block for proof of work, they're going to be reduced down to 0.6 Ether per block. And then the remaining is going to be given to proof of stake. So it's kind of like a hybrid model. And again, when they do that, there's not going to be much incentive for miners. So now Vitalik is talking about creating a hard cap for Ethereum that would be around 120 million Ether. So again, you know, this is just one thing that Ether's trying to do, which is great. Um, you know, I like that. They're trying to still um, stay competitive. So that was just one thing that I wanted to touch on real quick uh, before I return back to EOS. But going more into EOS now. So we talked about, you know, some of those reasons they were uh, added to eToro. And then, you know, they have Dan Larimer, you know, he's really, really big on um, working, you know, getting transactions per second very high. Uh, but another article that uh, a lot of people are looking forward to is EOS Finex. So this article was published on February 12th and is a Medium article by Bitfinex. And it says, today we are proud to announce EOS Finex, the first high performance decentralized exchange to be built on EOS.io technology. So again, this isn't happening right away, but it's just one more thing in the works. So basically what they're doing is they're combining the scalability and speed of EOS.io with Bitfinex's industry-leading expertise to deliver an on-chain exchange designed to offer a fast, transparent, and trustless platform for the trading of digital assets. So again, you know, it's they're trying to create the best of both worlds here. 
you know, because Bitfinex has a lot of traffic, so being able to use EOS's um, platform, you know, in which they will be able to handle a lot of transactions per second, that really blends well with what Bitfinex is trying to do. So I think this is definitely good. And again, you know, it's not going to happen right away, but I assume we will see this happening towards the end of the year. So again, keep an eye on this because this will be big as well. Now, another article here, this was published on March 22nd, and it gives you some future dates. And I think these are more of the reasons why EOS is getting, you know, such a big push. So as you know, the EOS ICO is, you know, the only ICO really that's kind of continuing. It's like an ongoing ICO. So they're slowly releasing new coins, you know, each period. And they're, they're doing that since last year for 341 days. So on June 1st of this year, I believe, um, or on June 3rd, sorry, um, that's when the EOS blockchain goes live. So they actually have a countdown when their mainnet is gonna launch. So if you go to eoscountdown.com, 34 days, 12 hours, 30 minutes, and 37 seconds until the EOS to IO launch goes live. So that's gonna be a big deal. But what this article says is, EOS will support at least 1,000 transactions per second at the start. This is reached using a one core implementation. The devs expect one CPU core to support up to 30,000 transactions per second but as security comes first, the EOS virtual machine will scale to this number step by step. So they're not trying to push, you know, push it too fast. I mean, they're slowly, you know, doing baby steps up to that 30,000 transactions, transactions per second. And it says EOS has the first blockchain supporting interchain communication. This means that EOS can run several blockchains in parallel. Moving tokens from one chain to the other is finalized under two seconds. So one chain could be used for social media while the other is used for financial stuff, for example. Interchain communication is supported right from the start. So, you know, and one more thing here is pointed out is the EOS block time is 0.5 seconds. A transaction can be considered confirmed with 99.9% .9 certainty after an average of 0.25 seconds from time of broadcast. In one second, your transaction is done, finalized, and confirmed by the majority of the block producers as they all sign all blocks. So this is huge. I mean, the confirmation times are fast, the transactions per second are fast, and again, the security is great. So I think they're doing great things here. Um, and again, you know, you have, you have very experienced people working on this, and I think it's definitely, you know, something that um, can't be overlooked when you're having a project of this magnitude. And as well as they also had their airdrop, I believe it was April 15th. So Again, you have all these events happening and it's just kind of, you know, snowballed to where everyone is buying it now and like like we've seen. So, you know, especially as we get close to this mainnet launch here in 34 days, uh, expect to see, you know, possibly pull back here and then a continued rise. So it'll be interesting to see where we go from there. And um, in this article here, it was talking about basically what I mentioned before is it's worth noting that EOS has rallied sharply in the run-up to the April 15th EOS DAC airdrop and more importantly remained well bid after the event. Something of a surprise since cryptocurrencies usually rally ahead of their airdrops then drop in value afterwards. So again, you know, after they had their airdrop on the 15th, the price didn't really drop um, afterwards. You know, they didn't really sell the news, if you will. They just uh, continued to go up. And if you look here, you know, we can go... April 15th on this chart here. And it was actually, I'll put it a month so you can actually see what happened. But yeah, basically, you know, April 15th, there wasn't really a drop. You can see it even rose after the airdrop. So that shows continued, you know, buyer support and just a lot of demand right now. So um, these were the main things, main reasons that I've deduced of why the price has been rising so much. Now, again, you know, it's, it's a lot of different stuff, but I just think that, you know, as these dates get closer, there are airdrops and just kind of as the mainnet gets closer, um, you know, more and more people are realizing, you know, how great the EOS is. With that said, it's had this parabolic rise and I think it's safe to say, you know, probably should wait for a pullback if you want to buy some EOS. Now, this isn't financial advice, just my opinion, but any coin that's ran up this much in a week, I mean, I think you know, it's definitely overbought. 
and it needs some, a pullback um, to recent you know support levels. So or at least uh, Fibonacci retracements, you know the uh, sixty one point eight percent retracement. So um, so yeah, so that's that's just my you know that's just my opinion what I think. But again, you know it's EOS is doing great things. It's a great platform and. It's right now, I mean, it's in the top five spot and that's crazy. I mean, seeing where it's been, you know, even from January, it's exceeded its all time highs from January. So, I mean, it's definitely a great platform. They're doing a lot of great things. It's, you know, definitely competing with Ethereum, but they're in their own separate categories. So uh, I definitely think they can coexist. But yeah, I just wanted to provide this video to explain why EOS has been rising so much every day and exactly what it is and you know what's been going on so i hope i cleared some stuff up i answered some questions that y'all had um if y'all have any more questions please feel free to comment below i'll try to answer them if i can and please subscribe if you haven't so until next time thanks for watching